All right, squad, in this video, I'm gonna quickly show you how to use the OmniAuth gem with Rails to create Google OAuth2 login. And you can use this to sync or link Google accounts to your user accounts, and then you can allow them to log in with Google, or in our instance, we wanna be able to get access to a token that we can access the YouTube API. So I'll quickly show you what it looks like. So here we, in the app, we're gonna create a little button that we're gonna hit login with Google. We're gonna select our account. We're gonna pass through our scopes that we wanna have access to. We're gonna hit allow. That's gonna redirect us back. And then by doing that, we're also gonna now have a record we're going to create a new model called user accounts where we store this information. We now have access to an access token, a refresh token and an expiry so we can use this to make requests to the APIs that we need. All right. Let's jump in. Okay, first things first, let's register an app in Google Cloud. So jump onto cloud.google.com, log in. You're going to need an account, all that jazz. Now, I'm going to click on quick access and I've got this APIs and services. So if you don't have that, hit view all products and then just find this APIs and services one. So we click that. And then from there, we should be able to go to our credentials tab, right? So what we wanna do here is we wanna create some OAuth2 client ID credentials. So we're gonna need a client ID and a secret. So let's create this. So we're gonna hit create credentials over here. Then we're gonna hit I'm gonna just see this one second, make this a bit bigger for everyone to see. I'm gonna hit create credentials and then I'm gonna hit OAuth client ID. Okay, so we're gonna hit that. It's a web application and we're gonna just call this Clipflow Dev. Okay, um, and now with the authorized redirect URIs, we will need to add our, our or, um, local host. So I'm running localhost 3000. So what we're going to do here, we're going to add HTTP, not S, forward slash, forward slash, localhost, colon 3000, and then it's going to be OAuth slash, and then let me just grab that. I think it's going to be, uh, where are you? Google OAuth2, Google underscore OAuth to underscore a forward slash, sorry, callback. All right, so we're gonna add that. And that's gonna be the callback URL. So this needs to match. So when we make a callback, the server is gonna pass it back to this URL here. Let's hit create on that guy. And let us do its thing. Okay, so now we've got its Clipflow dev. So these credentials here. Now, these are top secret usually, um, but I'm gonna delete these after, so it doesn't really matter. But you will have our client ID and our client secret. Now make sure you have test users created in your system, okay? You need to register your Google account as a test user so that you can actually use this because usually you need to actually get this approved by Google, but we don't want to do that in dev, it's just a waste of time. So make sure you add yourself a test user here, okay? So next up, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add those um, to our actual credentials in our app. All right, so to do that, open up console or terminal and we're gonna run this code, which is editor equals code wait, then Rails credentials edit and then environment development, right? So I'm doing this in my development environment. You will have this as well. When I hit this, I'm going to open up and add the credentials. I will blank this out. Um, just, I'll, I'll, I'll just so that we can't see what's going on. Okay, so I've opened up a file here, which represents our credentials file. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna have credentials like set up like this, okay? So we're gonna have, let's bump this up a bit more. We're gonna have Google as the key, client ID and client secret. So we're gonna grab these credentials from here, copy the client ID, paste it in there, copy the client secret, paste it in there, okay? Hit save and then close off the credentials and that should store, store that away for you. All right, so with that saved, you can see that the file gets encrypted and saved and we can test that they're there by going rail C and then running rails.application.credentials.dig Google. Um, uh, rails.application.credentials.dig Google. That will, one second. I actually have to add those properly. <laughs> Can't just do a demo. Okay, now that I've actually done that properly, we can go rail C and run that again. 
now we can see that those credentials are set there. So we now have access to those, so that's good. So that's the first sanity check. Make sure you actually have this. Also, restart your app server, because if I've run into problems where I haven't restarted and I'm wondering why nothing's working, and that's it. So whenever you change your credentials, restart your server. Let's go. Okay, now that we've restarted our servers, no, listening to what I'm saying, uh, we jump back into our gem file. Down the bottom here, I want to add a couple of gems, all right? So I'm just going to have a comment there. I like to comment them just to know where I found these gems from. But let's start. So the first gem we're going to add is the OmniAuth gem. Now that serves the base foundation for all our OAuth. You can read about OmniAuth there with that URL. We are, then we're going to add the OmniAuth uh, Google OAuth 2 gem. And that's specific little um, gem for Google OAuth 2. And that actually builds on top of the OmniAuth OAuth 2 library, which is, um, so it basically comes from here, then OAuth 2, then the Google OAuth 2, but that is gonna automatically pull it in for us. And then the one gem we need to include as well is the OmniAuth Rails CSRF protection. So this basically just adds the CRS protection so that we kind of cross site forgery. Um, uh, request forgeries, so that just protects against there. All right, so we just get all those gems. Once you've added them into your gem file, we're gonna jump into our console and we're gonna just go here, we're gonna go Rails, um, sorry, bundle, just run bundle, and that'll run it all. I've already installed these before, so it's got it there, but you can just run that and then make sure that these gems are actually there. Cool. Right, the next piece of the puzzle is we're gonna set up the initializer for OmniAuth. So we're not using device here. A lot of people use OmniAuth with device, which is a, a login tool, but we're gonna, or sorry, an authentication uh, gem, but we're, not, we're doing our own uh, authentication in this app. So we need to create our own initializers. We're gonna go config, initializers, and then in here we're gonna create OmniAuth.rb. And then we've got a bit of code here. So. Close this off. We're gonna go rails.application. And I'm gonna just shrink this sidebar so we can actually see what's going on. Dot config, dot middleware, dot use, OAuth builder, do. Um, and we'll just open it like that for now. Okay. Now the next thing we're gonna do is gonna go configure, dot uh, do, and then config. And this is trying to auto complete for me a lot. Now, we, the first thing we wanna do is, I like to use this uh, path prefix over here, right? So I like to use the OAuth path prefix just so that we know in our app that this is for OAuth. It's generally, I think the default is just auth. So if you have other auth endpoints, it can get a bit messy. So I like to use the OAuth specifically. And then here, the next one here that it's asking us to do, which is correct, is the config.logger is Rails logger if we're in development. So we wanna log out basically um, anything or as much as we can during development so we can debug this easier. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up our provider. So uh, OmniAuth has, you can have multiple providers. So for in the, our case here, we're using Google OAuth 2, but you could be using Facebook, you could be using um, a new number of different OAuth providers. I think there's even one for Apple. Um, so now we can go prov provider is Google OAuth 2. Then the first param is, so I'm just gonna tab this out so it can get kind of what we want. The first param is the client ID, which we're getting from our credentials file that we set up. And then we get our client secret, and then we can pass in a hash with options. All right, so what I'm doing here is I'm including the granted scopes true. So if we've been previously granted scopes, which is basically what are we allowed access to, we're gonna just get those again. And then here's a special scope. So. This is what it looks like if you had YouTube, for instance, like in our app, we use YouTube, but I'm just gonna clean this out for now. And we're just interested in email, profile, and offline. Now, email and profile are required, I think, as default when you're doing this uh, OAuth 2 with Google, but offline's a special one, and we want this so that we can get given a, re a refresh token. And the refresh token allows us to automatically, um, in the background in our app, request a new access token because they only last about an hour. I think Google's is one hour and then it expires and then it won't work anymore. So we need to be able to check that it's expired. If it's expired, use the refresh token and get a new one. So that's why we include this offline scope. Go away. Um, okay, 
So that's the initializer. So we've set that up. Next up is just basically a simple thing, but it's just inflections. So what inflections mean is just in Rails, I've spoken about this before, but it's just these special words. So for instance, OAuth is looks like this, a capital O, capital A. Rails will want it to look like that when you, it'll look up things like that. So we don't want that. We want to be able to look up OAuth. So we're going to create an inflection, right? So again, when you edit this file, make sure you restart your server. Another gotcha. So very simple, uh, config initializes inflections and then just add the acronym OAuth. All right, next up is the config. So we want to open up our routes folder. So that's in config routes. And in here, I am going to add a new route file OAuth. So I'm just going to say OAuth comment. And then it's a namespace OAuth do like that. It's going to go OAuth slash. And then I'm going to add another namespace. And it's not going to be called Google. It's actually going to be called Google OAuth 2 in case OAuth 3 or OAuth 10 comes out later. We've got OAuth 2 and then we're going to get callback. All right. Now let's have a look at what that looks like or routes. So I like to always check these just to make sure my routes are correct. I'm going to go OAuth. And we can see here. So we're getting OAuth slash Google OAuth 2 slash callback. Okay. So that's what's going to get passed out. And the basic convention is usually you pass out the provider name here. So that could be Facebook or whatever. And I'm cre going to create controllers specific for each provider. So we're going to have different logic depending on the kind of token we get returned, etc. All right, so that's the routes folder done. So we can close that off now. Now we can create our model to actually store the account data that we get back. So I'm going to do Rails G model and I like to call this user account. Okay, so a user can have many accounts. You could just call it an account but I found that user accounts a bit more specific when as you scale, it makes it easy to identify. And usually it's a user that authenticates, okay? So we're gonna hit Rails G model. You could make it account and then make it polymorphic so that different entities could authenticate, but I think it just gets a bit messy in the long term. All right, so jump into our, our migration file. So that's at, um, no, sorry, it's DB migrate and scroll down to the bottom one. Here it is. And we are going to add a few columns, all right? So the first one is belongs to user, okay? The next one is a string and this is called auth protocol. Um, protocol and the default is OAuth2, yeah? So if different protocols come along, we can store that so that we know what we're doing dot string is a provider. So now the provider is like, it'll be Google. It's the provider of the same in the Omni auth. So this one will be Google underscore OAuth2. Then I like to store a string and this, I call this the provider account ID. I find it better than the UID. You can call it UID, but I call it provider account ID just as explicit. Here we got a string and this is the access token, right? Now you technically could um, encrypt this as well and a probably best practice like moving forward so that this token is encrypted and no one can grab it um, so we could do that as a as a basically an improvement but I'm just showing you the basics today t dot string and this is the token type and this is default bearer right so it's a default it's a bearer token so when we use it, this in our request we know that it's a bearer token I like to just store that there just so that we know uh, T dot string is our scope, right? So all our different scopes that we supply, that usually is a string in the OAuth um, world. We got a T dot string, and I should say that's a space separated um, string. And in here we have a refresh token. Okay, so that's our refresh token. And then we got a T dot date time, and that's an expires at column. And that lets us know when we get our token, we're gonna get that value back, we store that so that we can check in our DB and say, hey, is this token expired or not? If it is, go and get a new one, okay? And that's what we need there for this. All right, so now what we can do is we can jump in here and go Rails DB migrate, run that and set that into the thing. I'm getting an error because I've already run this, but when you do it, it'll be sweet as, okay? And now what we can do is we can jump into the model app, 
models. And we are gonna go into our user account. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna say belongs to user. And then I, I add this method and that's where this cursor has picked this up, but it's before it's def expired. So we can basically say user account dot expired and ask the question and it's going to just check if expires that is less than time zone now, right? So if, it, if it's not in the future, it's expired. So it's just a quick way to double check that. And then finally, we also want to add the belongs to here. So that's added it there, but that's probably not the way I want it. Somewhere near the sessions. So it has many, a user has many user accounts, okay? And then that way we can say, can dot user accounts and it'll show me all the, the things I'm integrated into third party connections. So it could be Google, it could be Facebook, it could be whatever you want, right? I, I find that this over time has been the best way to actually keep track of these things. I, like I've learned from many years of doing these that storing it this way just is very future proof. So the next piece of the puzzle is setting up the actual controller. So we go app controllers and then here I'm going to create a new folder. And this is OAuth right so let's uh, if we have a look at our routes you can it'll give us hints of what we have to do so first namespace namespace is usually a folder is easy to do oauth right and then the next piece inside of it is going to be called new folder google underscore oauth2 okay so that's now that one and now oh sorry it shouldn't be a a, a folder it should actually be a controller so in here, we're going to have a new one called Google OAuth2 controller.rb. Okay. And now in here, this is the actual controller that's going to handle the method. So first thing first is the module is OAuth module. And you can see this is why we need that inflection because otherwise we'd have to reference it like that. And for me, that just doesn't feel right. So we do that. Then here we're going to have our class and it's going to be Google OAuth2 controller and it's going to extend our application controller, which is this one. All right. And then in here we're going to have def callback, callback. Okay. Now in here we're going to get two things that we care about. First is the auth, which is the auth payload, which comes from the request environment OmniAuth auth. So it sets that automatically for us. And then the next piece that I want is also the origin. And the origin is the page that referred this request. So as we build, we could be connecting from multiple pages to have different ways of doing it. But we want to always know where we came from so we can send the user back. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say render JSON as an object. And I'm going to just do auth and origin, okay? Because this is just a cool way to just see what actually comes back. So now let's just quickly add a button to our page. So this can be anywhere, but I'm just going to go if we open up our app views, controllers, and then we're looking at V2, users, edit, dashboard. So this is the, the page that I have here. And I'm going to just add in a button. So basically the button looks like this. I just shove it underneath the details. Whoops. So we go here. So it's a form tag that hits, doesn't hit the callback, it hits this. So OAuth, Google OAuth2. It's a post method, right? That's important. And then it's also turbo false. So it's data turbo false. I don't know if you can see that with my head in the way, but there you can see data turbo false, do opens up that block and then we've got hidden field tag origin so we're passing through where we want it to be redirected to so I want it to come back to this page and then also in here I want we've got the button that says login with Google right so if we now save that well I've got a pending migration let me just run that just run that again I deleted the table ran the migration all successful and here we go so here's the login with Google button I'm actually going to move that to the sidebar just here so it sits there so we got the login with google button now let's pull that there so you can see now when we hit this button let's see what happens okay so we've got no route matches posts or auth2 so we just have to have a look at what's going on i probably haven't restarted my server like and yeah i tell everyone to restart the servers and don't do it myself so here we go so we've got the login with google we click that now we get our consent screen 
right? If we've done everything right, this is where we should be. And you can see here, you can see that we started a post request and then we can see here Google OAuth 2 request phase initiated. All right, so first I'm gonna choose my account and then from there you can now see Clipflow wants to access your Google account and then it's gonna give the scopes. So depending on the scopes that you've provided, so this is remembering my previous scopes, that's why you can see these YouTube ones. You won't probably see those, but you'll probably see these here. So now you can say, yep, this is what a user will see. It's like, yes, I allow that, that's all happy days. We hit allow and now we have got and we've hit our controller back at our place, right? And now we can see the whole auth breakdown. So in here, I wonder if I can make this a bit bigger. There we go, make it a bit bigger for you guys. Um, you can see here, we've got our auth, we've got our provider. So that's coming from OmniAuth, the gem name. This is the UUID or the UID, so it's the user. And then you've got all the details, right? So the credentials, the token. So this token now, we can use this token um, to make requests and depending on your scope, right? So these are my scope that I've got because it's remembered from last time. It's got my user info, my profile, and then I can access the YouTube API, et cetera, et cetera. And using this token, we can now do this, okay? So we store the, we'll store this token, we'll store the refresh token, and the expires at, so you can see expires at, and it expires, and then this is an ID token. So an ID token is usually a JWT, so if I grab that, go to jwt.io, and I can just pop that right in here. You can see that this is just an encoded token and shows us basically the same info we've got already. Um, there's the ID info explained again. All right, so I think um, the gem does that work for us. And there's the origin. So that's where we're gonna redirect. So now let's set up this uh, controller to actually do a bit more work because we don't wanna just render that out, we wanna actually use it. So let's keep going. Okay, so the first thing that I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna say user account is equal to user account dot find by and this is going to be auth so first we're going to find by so it'll be provider there and then what i want to also do because i'm using a current user i also want to have the user is set to current dot user because i'm allowing the different users to connect basically the same account which isn't technically correct if you're using this for login so what you'd probably want to do is not have this but I, just because we work in teams, I'm, I'm just trying to think if we need to be able to allow the same user to connect to multiple different accounts. And coming to think of it now, probably don't. So we can probably just remove that. So now we can look up the provider, which is the auth provider, which is the Google. Um, so if we have a look here, we'll see what it is. Uh, Google OAuth 2. And then we're gonna look up by the UID here, and that's the account. So if we have an, a user with the Google and that, that's the user account we want. And this is actually find or initialize by, because it may not exist yet, okay? So in our instance, it actually may not exist. So that we're gonna just initialize it in that instance. And then what we're gonna do here is we're gonna say user account dot attributes because we're gonna update this account. So first, yeah, we're gonna set the access token. It's gonna be auth.credentials.token. Then we're gonna set the auth protocol. So it's gonna be auth protocols OAuth2. We're gonna set the expires at. And so this is gonna go time at whatever that is expiring to date time. Refresh token is auth.credentials.refresh token. The scope, so we saw the scope. So the reason I saw the scope here is so that I can check in the app, if we require a specific scope to do something, we can check that that user account has that scope. If not, we can request a, a new authentication, right? So that's why we store that locally, or in our DB, I should say. And then the token type is not of that, it's just bearer, okay? Now with that, we can hit user account.save and then finally we can go redirect to origin, okay? So now we've actually got something here. So now when we sign up, we're actually getting these details. And this is how you link the two together. So also finally, sorry, we also need to add in user here is current user. So we wanna create this account for this current user, right? So we wanna link that whoever was logged in when they did it and now this depends on your flow. So if you're using this as a login, 
you probably wouldn't um you would create you would do it slightly different where you'd create the user and then link the account but that's going to depend on your use case so in our use case you connect an account after you've created a user okay so we already have the user so you're logged in and then you sync whereas the other way around is you have a user account you create that and you create that at the same time as the user so you do a nest accepts nested attributes for okay so that depends is going to depend slightly on your use case so i'll let you figure that one out um, to do a little bit of work done most of the work here for you so that's all good all right so now what we can do is if we open up the db and have a look at the user accounts let's just make sure we got this open you can see there's nothing here right now but now if we go into our flow and start again right and we hit login with google where are you there login with google it's going to step us through allow all these scopes yep and now we're back here right now what we can see here is we actually have all this information here and a quick thing we can do here is we can actually use this access token making requests now and then we can refresh the token here and you can see here's our scope so all our different things that we have and it's all stored there ready to go okay so that's how that's a very quick demo on how to use OmniAuth and use it to create an OAuth login using OAuth2 and it just provides you the basics but you can expand on this and do whatever you want it's very easy and I think I just wanted to show how to structure the app for this because it's something that you come across a lot um, as you grow and then you start figuring out oh, that doesn't quite work so this way I feel like is quite uh, sustainable in the long run uh, and future proof so hopefully you enjoyed that one and I'll catch you on the next one